Hello there! I did not think that I would be making any videos right now because I'm traveling, but a few days ago Boca Chica Gal Mary and NASA Spaceflight took a picture of a supply label on one of the stainless steel rows that was being transported in Boca Chica. This label contains a lot of previously unknown precise information about what the Starship prototypes are made of. It's definitely worth diving into and since I don't have any of my equipment, I will be doing it Scott Manley style. Look, I even have a beer! So I removed some of the geometric distortion from the label so that we can better see what's in it. The first two fields tell us about where and by whom the steel was made. It's made in Calvert, Alabama by a company named Autokumpu. Autokumpu is a large stainless steel manufacturer based in Finland. In fact, it's the largest one in Europe and the second largest in Americas. What is interesting is that Autokumpu says on their website that this particular mill in Calvert, Alabama is the most technically advanced stainless steel mill in the US and the only one in North America that can make six feet wide rolls. The two fields below contain the internal ID for the customer and order, but in the remarks field below we can clearly see two things. The stainless steel type is clearly 304L. All the new Starships starting with SN8 are made out of this type of steel. By the way, if you want to know the exact reasons why they switched from 301 to 304L stainless steel, including the physics behind it, I have a deep dive video on this very topic. The 50% RA denotes the roughness average, the level of polishing based on the ASTMA standards. In this case it means that the surface roughness was reduced to roughly one half, making the surface somewhat shinier. Now, let's get to the really interesting part, the dimensions. This roll, as small as it looks on the picture, weighs over 12 tons. 12,250 kilograms to be precise. For comparison, this is about a half of the weight of the empty first stage of Falcon 9. I believe that for the first time we have seen the exact thickness and width of the steel. This particular steel is 3.96 mm thick. And it is important to note that the thickness might differ for each of the Starship rings. The forces acting on each ring will be different, and if SpaceX wants to minimize the total mass, which they absolutely do, they will design each ring only as thick as needed. The width of the roll is exactly 72 inches, or 6 feet in freedom units, which is roughly 1.83 meters in metric. Per Autocompus website, this is the widest roll you can get in North America. Now that we know the width, thickness and the density of the material, we can compute the total length, which equals to unbelievable 211 meters, or roughly one-eighth of a mile. This means that SpaceX can theoretically build seven rings out of a single row, or 12.8 meters of a Starship height. On the right of that, there are two proprietary ID numbers for the roller and the ingot. But the third line is the identifier of the finish, which is based on standards. The TR finish denotes that the steel is extra hard, that it is cold rolled and without final annealing. Unfortunately, it does not say how much hardening the roll went through. I could not find the meaning of the 22, so please, if any one of you knows, write it down in the comments. The last remaining question about the steel I have is the exact level of hardness. But with some basic maths and physics, we can make an educated guess. I would not let you get away without doing some math. Based on the information we have from Elon, we can estimate the yield strength that the material needs to have in order not to explode. Then, because I have data for it, we can compare it to the softest and the hardest finish at cryogenic temperatures. For estimating the strength, we will use the approximation formula for thin pressure vessels. Starship tank is an extremely thin pressure vessel, so the results will be as good as any sophisticated simulation method. In cylinders, there are two different forces acting on the material. Axial stress, which is in the direction of the cylinder axis, and hoop stress, which pushes outwards. The hoop stress is twice as large, so that is what the material has to be designed for. The formula for hoop stress is sigma h equals the pressure p times radius of the cylinder r divided by the thickness of the material. It is pretty simple, so let's put in the numbers. Elon stated that to get Starship to orbit, they need six bar of pressure. Moreover, he stated that they want 40% margin for human rating, which will result in 8.4 bar, which is 0.84 megapascals, or 8.4 times 10 to the power of 5. The Starship is 9 meters wide, so the radius is 4.5 meters. 
and the thickness of the material is 3.96 meters, which is 3.96 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Putting this together, we get a hoop stress of 955 megapascals. So, is any 304L still capable of resisting this high of a stress? This plot shows values of yield strengths at different cold temperatures for two extremes. Full hard finish, which is the strongest, but the least ductile, and the annealed finish, which is the opposite. As you can see, the full hard finish, at the temperatures corresponding to the liquid methane, is more than strong enough for its task. In fact, I'm pretty sure that SpaceX will be using a steel with less hard finish than that to get higher ductility. Well, this is all I have for you. And if you enjoyed the whole Starship building process as much as I do, I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank again NASA Space Flight and Mary for documenting everything that's happening in Boca Chica. Without them, this would not be possible. Have a wonderful day!